you have a question? I did have a question. Oh, yeah, I sure. Well, I was wondering, as a fan of the comics, um, did you have any input on which comics they actually chose to do episodes? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you know, I mean, I would show up in the studio and just, um, you know, they would already be working on an episode. They would write the wraparounds after the episode just because they would have wanted to see the tone of the episode before they, you know, before they, you know, obviously it was some very clever things, you know, it's like, okay, well, this one's kind of a brainy thing. Let's put a, you know, the Crypt Keeper sitting there and he's frying a brain in a, in a pan and he's going, this is your brain. He throws it in the pan and he goes, this is your brain on Tales from the Crypt and he mashes it in the mallet, you know. And I was like, you know, so they would come up with some fun stuff like that, but I would go into the studio and Kevin, because Kevin was directing the episodes, he would also direct me in the studio and he would just, you know, once he knew that I had a knack for this character, he'd just let me improvise and we'd come up with stuff and then he'd wind up rewriting it and, and that kind of thing. And then I'd, I'd just make them laugh by doing, you know, the Crypt Keeper as John Wayne, the Crypt Keeper <laughs> as Marlon Brando, and then by the third or fourth season, they started, I, they'd start winding up in the scripts. You know, I'd get like, you know, the Crypt Keeper is standing at the bottom of a balcony and he's in a torn t-shirt, you know, with his skinny little body and he's like, <laughs> you know, and so um, you know, it was kind of fun to see that evolve that way. But um, you know, they, I know that the fans would send in letters and stuff like that, and, and say, you know, I love this comic book story, and they at times would seek that out. I remember being at a Fangoria convention; there was like fifteen hundred people in the audience, and. And it, like all, everybody was there to promote the show, and it was Joel Silver and Bob Zemeckis, and everybody were on stage, and you know I was kind of proctoring it and like making everybody laugh by doing the Crypt Keeper. And then of course we started getting the really you know bizarre questions. You know, episode forty, uh, comic book uh, number forty-three story with a glass coffin. Why hasn't that been made? You know, they're like, they knew, you know, one of the directors and go, hey, that sounds like a good one. Let's make that one. <laughs> so, um, you know, and who wound up directing them or acting in them just had to do sometimes with who was available. You know, I mean, obviously these producers had access to some big people, big directors, and of course it was a playground for, you know, Michael J. Fox directed an episode, and uh, Michael Keaton directed an episode, and Tom Hanks directed an episode, and Arnold Schwarzenegger directed an episode, and, you know, all these different people that had never really directed anything, so, you know, wanted the chance to direct something, would come in and direct these, these things too. The guy that directed my episode, Paul Abascal, was, uh, had worked on all these movies for Joel Silver, um, who obviously, you know, Joel from all these big budget Lethal Weapon movies and whatever, I mean, you know, all those huge movies that he produced. And Paul was, was not, had never directed anything, but always had wanted to direct. He was, uh, he did uh, all kinds of makeup and special effects makeup and that kind of thing. And he was great, he did a great job. You know, because there are all these people that are craftsmen, and that, that's one of the great things about Tales from the Crypt, it took all these different crafts that you don't usually get to see used on television. And these guys had access to all these great <coughs> directors and effects people and script writers and musicians. You know, there's, they put out DVDs of music from Tales from the Crypt that had stuff from, from Hans Zimmer and, you know, Ry Cooter and, um, uh, uh, Stuart Copeland and all these people that you know, uh, and Danny Elfman wrote the theme song to Tales from the Crypt, you know. Very <laughs> <laughs> Danny Elfman, right? Um, special effects people, even the opening to the show was the first time you ever saw something that combined models, actual sets, and CGI. Like when you come into the beginning of Tales from the Crypt, it's a model that goes into a set that goes down the steps through CGI, that goes back into another set, and where the Crypt Keeper pops out of the coffin. That's all like a combination of things. Obviously, Bob Zemeckis doing all these great shows that he did, uh, you know, uh, Forrest Gump and everything, loved using all that kind of uh, weird effects and, and that kind of thing. So he would, he would come try them out on Tales from the Crypt, which was kind of neat. It was the one episode he did where, where um, uh, Isabella Rossellini and, and uh, Ben Cross are um, playing opposite Humphrey Bogart. I'm trying to remember who else was in it. But they took old footage and they were able to see it so that 
it looks like they were all in the same movie together. So this is kind of great. Um, you know, they'd like to do a lot of different stuff with it. I mean, these guys obviously have their hands in all kinds of big projects. And the, the DVD box sets have all come out because the, the, the rights reverted back to Originally, the rights were shared between the partners and HBO, and then they and then it got licensed to Fox for when the show was on Fox, and they licensed it to the Sci-Fi Channel and then American Movie Classics, and so the rights reverted all back to the original partners. So at that point, they have the right to go and exploit it wherever they can sell it. Obviously, people don't have a lot of money these days; they want to spend on stuff and shows. And so, you know, coming into anybody with a show and saying we want to do Tales from the Crypt, it's not a cheap show to produce, you know, wouldn't be that as easy to do unless you had a plan on how it was going to get paid for. Um, you know, but they have a guy, I always call him the Crypt Keeper's Pimp, <coughs> but he's, uh, he, he's an advertising guy whose his job is to find little projects for Tales from the Crypt, and specifically the Crypt Keeper, and he's always trying to get them you know, the crib keeper is hawked Bud Light. He's, you know, he's been for all the all the theme parks, you know, Universal, Fright Night, Scary Nights. You know, they they hired me to do a bunch of stuff all over the theme park where you hit a crib keeper, like you know, come through here, crepes, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so there's always somebody working on it, but it's, you know. They talked about doing their own horror channel that was hosted by the Crypt Keeper. They talked about all kinds of things, but um, you know, it's all about somebody taking the diligence and put it together. Uh, anytime you see anything on television or film or whatever, somebody's probably spent years getting it there. You know, very often, except for you know a lot of the crap you see now on TV, all these reality shows and stuff. The good ones are the good ones, and somebody worked hard and they were sold. And then all the other ones are you know, imitations that the network throws out. You know, it's like throwing let's throw all the shit against the wall, see what sticks. You know, they, they try it and it's cheap for them to produce. They're all marketing people now taking over the business. So it's, you know, obviously the Tales from the Crypt is a great franchise and uh, I think any network would be stupid not to jump on it. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a matter of timing very often. Very often a matter of timing. So I, I wouldn't. I would totally be shocked if you didn't see more Tales from the Crypt movies or uh, series. We probably have time for about another one more question. Does anybody have another question? I have one.